Okay, so I'm going to take my cord. Now, the general rule for a cobra braid is that you need one foot of cord for every inch of braid. Poirot's neck measures 11 and a half inches, and because he's so fluffy and to accommodate the thickness of the braid, I tend to add an inch and a half to the overall measurement. So that's 13 inches in total, including the buckle. So I have 13 feet of cord here, and you can see that I'm using two different colours. This is purely so it's visible to you and you can see what I'm doing with each strand, but it's also a cute look. So just make sure that whatever you want down the centre is the strand you begin with. You can see here that I've joined it at the centre. If I was doing two colours normally, I would join the two strands off centre, just so the join is hidden in the braid. This just makes it a bit neater and more secure, and it means if it does come apart, now it rarely does, but if it does, then it's tightly secured in the braid. Whereas if you put it here and just in the centre and it comes apart, there's not really anything you can do with it. So first you're going to find your centre point. This is easy for me because I'm using two different colours. But if you're just using one, put the ends together and then find the centre. You're then going to take your buckle. Now, I usually use the female end of the buckle. That's just a habit. It doesn't really matter. But if you're making collars to sell, I do recommend that you choose one and be consistent with it because it looks a bit more professional obviously if you're just making them for your own pets it doesn't matter so you'll have your buckle and what i like to do is take the d-ring and just lie it on top this way both your d-ring and your buckle will be joined in your starter knot and it just saves it from being fiddly if you try and put it on the other side while also trying to get your measurement right so we're going to start with a single lark head knot this is also called a single cow hitch knot you're just going to take your centre point and pop it from the bottom up through the buckle. Now this is a bit challenging for me because I joined my cord quite badly, but just persevere with it. If it's really difficult, what you do is just take the ends and pop them through from the top down. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to take my D-ring and pop it on top of the buckle so the loop of the cord is passing through both. Usually with a single lark head knot, people will tell you to take both the ends and put them through the loop, but when you're using longer lengths of cord like this, it can be a bit of a hassle. What I prefer to do is just take this loop and pop it over the back of the buckle, just like this, and pull it to tighten. You can see my join here is at the back, so it's essentially a single lark head knot, but backwards, and you'll see why in just a second. I'm just being a little careful with how I tighten it, just in case my cord comes apart. What we're going to do now is, I like to work left to right, you don't have to do this, it's really personal preference, but I'm going to take my left strand, the green strand, and take the end, pop the end through the buckle and the d-ring from the bottom up, just like this, and you'll see here we've created a loop. Just take the same end and pop it through the loop, just like this, and pull it to tighten. And what you can see now is that you have what looks like a single lark's head knot on the front and you're just going to do the exact same thing with the right strand, the pink strand. Don't worry at this point if your d-ring looks like it's slipping off centre, it is adjustable and it'll sit a lot more comfortably once you've done the second knot. So just take the end of your pink strand and you're just going to do the exact same thing. So pop it through the buckle from the bottom up. I'm just going to pop the knot over a little bit so I've got some room. Make sure it's going through the buckle and the d-ring and once again we've created a loop and you're just going to take the ends through that loop and pull it to tighten and what you can see now is that we've created what's called a double lark's head or a double cow hitch knot i absolutely love this knot because it looks professional and it's going to match up with the knots on the other side of the buckle so it if you're selling them, it gives a really clean look because if you're anything like me, even just for personal use, to be honest, you want it to look good. And I've honestly done so many trial and errors for what is actually a really simple starter knot that looks great. But so few people have actually shown how to do this. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is take the other half of the buckle and the two ends of our cord and we're just going to pop them through the buckle. But this time we're going to go from the top towards the bottom. Pull the course through and then we're going to measure and make sure the length is the right measurement. So for me, that's going to be 13 inches. 
And what you want to do when you're measuring is make sure that you're measuring from the end of the female end of the buckle to the base of the clip on the male end. I'm just going to quickly measure this against a ruler. All right, so that is 13 inches. And what we're going to do now is exactly what we did for our first set of knots. Just for ease, I'm going to take these center strands through. And again, I'm going to be starting left to right. You want to make sure that your middle strands that you've just taken through is lying on top to create your loop. So take, again, your strands, take it from the bottom of the buckle up and through the loop that you've created. You want to pull it to tighten. And what you'll see here is that we have another single lark's head knot. And what we're going to do is just the exact same thing for the green side. But first, what I like to do is just double check your measurements because it's much easier to adjust one than both. All right, so I'm taking my green side and I'm just doing the exact same thing from the bottom to the top, through the loop and pull to tighten. I usually just double check my measurement here just to make sure before starting my braid. All right, time to start braiding. You can see I've taped my buckle to my surface. This is just to stop it moving around. I do have a paracord jig. My dad made it for me and it is awesome, but it's also huge and would never have fit in this video. So what I'm gonna do, again, working left to right, is I'm popping my pink strand over the center two strands. Now take a note of that loop because you're going to use it. Take your green strand and pop it over your pink and you're going to go under the center two strands and through that loop. Now it's important to note here that the pink strand is going to be the one going down the center. So if you want the green to be down the center, you're going to have to do it the other way around. So you start with your green and put that over the center instead. Just pull it to tighten, push it up towards the buckle to get rid of any of that gap. I'm just being a bit delicate here because I don't want my buckle to come apart from the tape. And we're just going to repeat that starting with the right side. You can see it's still my pink strand that I'm starting with. I'm just going to place it over the top again. Notice that we've made that loop again because you're going to use that. Take your green strand, place it over your pink, under your two centre strands and through this loop. You're just going to pull it to tighten. You have the start of a cobra braid. Now you're just going to essentially repeat that all the way down. So I'm just taking my pink strand again, placing it over my center two strands. Take my green strand over my pink, under my center two strands, and through the loop that we've created. Repeating again with our pink strand just to finish off this section of braid. I'm going to take my pink over my center, take my green over my pink, underneath my center and through the loop, pull to tighten. This is literally what you're going to do the entire way down. Now, if you're using the same color, and I've done this myself, you can sometimes lose track of which one you just did, but don't worry because it's actually really easy to tell. Now, I am using two different colors, so it is very obvious, but it's actually quite obvious as well when you're just using the one. You can, just what I'm doing here, follow the loops with your fingers to see which strand you need to place over, but I'm just gonna demonstrate if you do it the wrong way, how different the braid looks. And you can tell right away that's not right. Even if that was the same color, you would know that's not the right way. And all you need to do is just loosen it off and untie it. I'm just going to speed the video up here while I finish the rest of the braid. If you feel like you need to watch it again a few more times, just go back to whichever bit you want to rewatch. You can also slow down the video in the settings so you don't feel like you have to watch it in one go at the speed that I'm filming it at.
So now you can see I've finished my braiding and this is what I mean when I say whatever colour you start with will be the centre. You can see that the green is the centre on the back and the pink is the centre on the front. So to finish this off we're going to take the rem remainder of our strands through the loops on the back and then we're going to cut and singe them so that it looks nice and neat. Now I'm just loosening off the braid here to make that a bit easier. I'm going to grab my needle nose pliers this is where they really come into play. And what I'm just going to do is put them through the loop that I've loosened. You can do this one at a time or you can do this both at a time. I'm going to take the ends and I'm going to grab them and pull them through the loops on the back. I'm going to do just the exact same with the green. This is also why I like to singe my ends and flatten them. It just makes it a lot easier to grab with the pliers. Pop them through the loop again. Grab your end and pull it through. Now sometimes it can twist, just keep fiddling with it until it's right. And you'll see this is actually quite wide on the front. Now I don't mind that just now, but what you can do is use your pliers just to tighten any bits that are a bit loose. You can pull the strands here so that the braid is perfectly even and narrow but I don't mind mine being slightly wider at the end just because it'll be thinner at the back, it won't be quite as chunky. Now that we have our strands through the back, we are going to take our scissors and cut off the excess. I'm using my fabric scissors, but you can use regular scissors just as well. My fabric scissors are really cheap, so I don't mind using them on paracord. So I'm just going to take off the ends. I'm going to leave about a centimetre excess. And I'll show you why in just a second. So I'm just going to take my lighter now and I'm going to burn the ends. Now be careful when you do this because if you catch any of the braiding with the flame it will burn open. Now it doesn't usually burn the whole way through but it doesn't look quite as nice. So just make sure when you're burning the ends that you're keeping them out of the way. That is also why I take about a centimetre of excess as opposed to trying to cut it really close. So I'm just going to bend my collar here and then use my lighter to seal the ends. And what I'm going to do with my pliers is take the centre part and I'm just going to press down to flatten it. I'm going to just demonstrate that again because I went off camera here. It's really hard when my camera's above my head and I can't see what I'm doing. So I just took my pliers and I've got a, a small round bit in the centre and I just like to press that down to flatten that into the collar a bit more and keep it nice and neat. If you want, you can try and tuck the ends underneath parts of the braiding. It just makes it look a bit neater and hides them. But I can say from making many collars and selling them, no one minds the way it looks at the back. And there you have it, one beautifully handmade Cobra Braid dog collar. If you prefer step-by-step -step instructions, head over to my blog where you can get all the details of this video with pictures.